The roadmap for the wildest ride in our lives is inside us thanks to our DNA. So would you be brave enough to discover where it leads? 12 New Zealanders have, and they're about to find out what really runs in their blood. Now, modern science can sometimes reveal more than we'd like to know. DNA testing is about to throw cricket commentator Lee Hart and presenter Sonia Gray a curveball or two. So I'm not probably going to inherit this. It's on lately. Okay. I don't know why families have so many secrets. <laughs> Lee Hart is known for casting his humorous eye over everything from cricket to sausages, but when it comes to his family, things get very serious. His DNA results will take him on a surprising journey, but first, here's his own take on his family's history. On my father's side, we came from Birmingham in, in England. I know very little on my mother's side. Her father, we know, came from Australia. There's been a rumor or legend that there could be Aborigine in the family somewhere, which would explain a few things. On, on our side, um, a few of us go and walk about here and there. I think I'd like to find a family history which is very similar to the characters that are in it now. I'd like to think they're sort of down-to-earth people, the characters perhaps. I'm a father with two children, a boy and a girl. I feel a bit more of a, as if I'm doing it on behalf of the whole family. My kids, my parents, my brother, because we're all getting the information, the same information. I just happen to be the, the courier and just hope I don't stuff it up. Ah, oh, hello, Lee. Welcome to the Inner Sanctum. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Lee, you were born on the west coast of New Zealand, and yet you have a South American connection. Yep, born in Greymouth on the west coast, which is a coal mining town. And my father was a coal miner. Um, and around about the time I was born, um, he gave that up and got involved in tunnelling, you know, hydro schemes. OK. Uh, so we left and went overseas. As I say, we were living 13,000 feet in the Andes in, in Peru, so it was a very strong sort of formative memories for me before I came back to New Zealand. And it was only when I was about 10 that I started to even get a sense of my New Zealand roots. I have a world map here that's going to show you the countries where your DNA markers are. Are you ready to right, watch sure, this? sure, yeah. Well, Lee, no Aboriginal DNA here. You're as English and Irish as it gets. But your DNA also has 3.4% Scandinavian markers, which could mean a touch of Viking in your past. And, of course, the Vikings came out of Norway, across the Northern Isles, which fits in with the other results we see for you. And we found over 931 DNA matches, and you're about to meet a few of them. But don't go packing your battle axe yet. All is not as it seems. Well, that's all you need to know for now. Take that with you, and uh, happy hunting. Thank you. Bye. Actually, a battle axe might be very handy for where Lee's going. But so long as he packs his luck of the Irish, he should be OK. Text from Richard. <laughs> Never been there before. Exciting. I wonder who pays for the text, me or him? To be honest, I wasn't that surprised that I might have Irish heritage or DNA. My mother's name, maiden name is Crowley, which I think is Irish. But what was more surprising is that we never actually followed that line. Ah, Lee, your intel is correct. We are following your mother's DNA, and it leads to a lass named Laura Houston. She's your third cousin, which means you share a great-great-grandfather. Hi, Hi, Laura. How's it going? Nice to meet you. I'm Lee. I understand we're related in some way. Third yep. cousins, perhaps. Yeah. Related through DNA. I can't wait to find out actually what sort of traits we may have in common, etc. Okay. She'll grab a drink. <laughs> <laughs> So, Laura, what made you do a DNA test in the first place? Going back in Ireland for your ancestors is quite difficult because we don't have very much census records because it was a fire in Dublin and obviously it was all paper census records. Right. So the fire burnt all of the census records. 
So DNA enabled you to sort of tap into the... Exactly, go okay. in a lot further back. You're not trying to find a kidney or something, eh? <laughs> I don't need a kidney, my health. Okay. Though I've always worked for companies that have been doing gen genomic sequencing, which is another reason why I was very interested in getting my own done. Great. Do you know if we're related to anyone famous over here, like Bono perhaps or something? Or? No, but we're actually related to Anya, one of the singers from oh, here. Oh, the singer? Yeah. So she's my full fourth cousin. So it's a good chance I could be related to her? Yes, yes, definitely. And she's from Donegal, so it's all very similar place. Fantastic, because I, I did imagine when I, when I embarked on this journey that perhaps I could be related to someone really famous, relative Elvis Presley perhaps, you know, might have explained why I put weight on in the 30s, you know, my <laughs> 30s and stuff, you know, but he obviously carried on and died, but um, yeah, it's a small world, isn't it? Enya. Mm. Have you any musical ability yourself? Um, questionable. Musical in the sense that I, I, I love music and I, I used to play in bands with, with my brother and and that's all I did for a while was music. My father used to play drums, and that's why I got into music. He was in rock and roll bands, so I think I'm musical, but I'm probably more musical than I am talented, if that makes any sense. So th these are your haunts around yes, here? Yes, exactly. Yeah. When, it, when the sun's out. When the sun's out, yeah. yeah. It can be pretty miserable in the winter if you're outside. <laughs> Any live music? Yeah, I mean, there'll be live music in every pub here. I love it here, it's cool. Cheers. Cheers. Nice, nice to meet you. So, how can DNA prove that two people are genetically related? Tests have been developed that map our DNA, and that means we can now screen for inherited disease and even decode our ancestry. By comparing one person's DNA to that of others, we can find out whether they share segments of DNA, and if they do, that means they share an ancestor. Broadcaster Lee Hart's DNA has taken him to Ireland. He's already met a third cousin, but that's just the tip of the iceberg, genetically speaking. Ah, uh, Lee, your link to Ireland's very strong. You know, there's even a small island linked to the family. Hundreds of years ago, your relatives became known as the Boils of Inish Keel. So if you head there, you're going to find a caravan with your name on it. <laughs> a caravan with my name on it. That's fascinating. <laughs> Now, these days, the island of Inish Keel is abandoned, but the Boyle clan are alive and thriving on the mainland, where Lee will be meeting his fourth cousin, Patrick. A lot of questions for Patrick. I want to find out how he fit in, how it all came about. And of course, technically, he is a relative. So at what point can I ask him if I can borrow some cash? Must be the island that Richard mentioned. It's a beautiful spot. Wow. Patrick oh, yeah. Boyle, I presume. You're welcome. <laughs> Yo, what do you think of this part of the world? Well, it's, uh, it's beautiful, peaceful. Oh, it's very quiet. And you've been living here all your life? All the life, yes. I understand there's probably plenty of Boyles living in this. Well, there's a lot of them, but then there's, they're all kind of interconnected as well. And those you'll meet tomorrow, some of them are connected to us, some of them are not connected to us. So we're going to meet some more? Yep. <laughs> Around 30, we think. So it's hard to believe that my DNA pretty much started a lot of it. Here in this caravan park, hundreds of years ago. Well, it would have been a caravan park then, No, it? No. but uh, it would have been farmland. I mean, I've got so many questions I want to ask you over the next few days, but I'm home now. <laughs> well, so I suppose we, we, we should delighted. crack open the good stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a bit early in the day now to be cracking open the good stuff. Well, right? well I'm different times then. I always thought these travel shows with people on TV were always quite self-indulgent, I suppose, but... Then I got asked to do one, I thought, what a great idea. Patrick and Lee's connections are through Lee's third great-grandfather, Hugh Boyle. But the Boyles go back much further than that. In fact, their ancestral fort may date back as far as 1700 BC. Perfectly Whoa. parked. So now we must welcome you to the home of the Boyles. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, but... <laughs> <laughs> That was a good presentation. <laughs>
This is where we all originated from. Really getting deep into it. Yep, the name of the area would have been Boila originally. That would have been synonymous with the people that lived in this fort. And you can see from the sign there that the last guy at a big battle here was Conor O'Boyle, and he was killed here. So the Boyles, the name obviously came from... From this place. From, from that. So this yeah. essentially is the, the, the centre of it all, yep. where it all started. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And how old is this? 3,000 years. 3,000 years. Let's certainly mm -hmm. take the family back a bit. So I'm not probably going to inherit this. It's unlikely. OK. <laughs> wow. So you can imagine, and here they would have had all their families that would have been living in here, there would have been probably yep. thatched houses inside here. Very, very small, low uh, houses. So it's an amazing view, and you can see how it would have been so protected from people with this water. Yep. So do you feel a connection, uh, a specific connection with this place, being well, a boil? Yeah. Uh, we would look on this as our own heritage, our own family's heritage, because it can be traced back okay. for, for years and generations. And you would have come here as a child, oh, I suppose? Yes. Well, every up. Sunday evening, brown trout fishing, making a boat, bring the guard friends out. Oh, yeah. OK. If these walls could talk. <laughs> I don't want them talking, no. <laughs> I think there was a moment for me when I sort of broke through with Patrick. It's, it's very strange. We're thrust together and expected to get along. And I think that moment happened on the island at the fort. You know, talking about his, his teenage years coming over to that island and bringing girls, etc., over there as a teenager. And I could relate to those experiences, you know, having a few beers, that kind of thing, as you're growing up. So, for, for me, that was certainly a time where we, we connected. From DNA testing, Lee Hart's discovered he has Irish connections, and through his fourth cousin, Patrick Boyle, he's discovered that those connections may date back as far as 1700 BC. And these strong family ties are going to take us to the island of Inishkeel. My third great-grandfather, Hugh Boyle, born in 1819, was born in this island. And this is the person who moved to Australia and consequently to, to New Zealand. And perhaps this is the church where he had communion or got baptised, who knows, but it's fairly run down now. The guy that would have been related to you that, that was buried here is just there at the edge, and he was a bishop. So he's, he's unmarked, is there any reason it's unmarked? No, no, it's just gone now. The... So that's interesting. So I've got a relative who was buried here. Yep. So another Boyle name there, Alan yep. Boyle. We're not sure how she fits in, but surely part of the same family. And this symbol here was also, is that pagan? Yeah. So we were pagans. Well, I don't think so. You must remember back at that stage, the pagan feasts were all linked into Christian ones. And let's not confuse pagan with bogan. Bogan is a different thing. Than a, different than thing together, yeah. Lee! Time to meet some livelier relatives. If you head up to the cafe, you're going to find some hungry and thirsty boils waiting for you. You're going to shout them around or two, I believe. So we've got a few boils here now. And a bit, uh, of, a, a bit of a boil up, as we call it, in, oh. in New Zealand. It's great. You look at the old faces and you think, oh, yeah, there's a connection there because they're old. But when you see a young child, you suddenly realise that the DNA that's in my children, as well as me, is also in these people this story is going to carry on for many generations, you know, and kids remind you of that. That's what it's all about. So now that we're all here, um, who's got a couple of grand I can borrow? <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with the fundraising, lay for the renovations. You're going to need a good chunk of change to fix up the old family home. Now, Hugh and Mary Boyle's traditional cottage from the early 1800s is still standing, though. Just. So they would have had dinner here. They would have every decision they made, every, they would have talked about perhaps moving to Australia, probably right over here. You know, it's hard to imagine even who they were, but what is amazing is the fact that had one of them not, had not been born or even moved, I wouldn't have existed at all. So that's what's amazing. So that's the only thing that really matters is the fact that a good deal of my DNA began here or was here. Bit of work, I'll probably fix it up and move back here. Maybe put some aluminium joiner in the windows there and cover steel roof. Yeah. It started to, to sink in a little bit that I certainly do have a DNA connection to this place. And in many ways, it's a small town that is not that dissimilar to the a small town where I was born, Rananga, on the west coast. 
I can see why people that left Ireland many years ago would have felt comfortable in New Zealand in certain parts. It's peaceful. The people are simple in the best way. It's, it's a simple life. Plancha, cloud your war. Thanks for your help, man. Fantastic. The thing I'm most um, pleased about is the fact that the people I've met through this experience have been good, down-to-earth, normal people, and they've got normal number of fingers on their hands, which is, which is a bonus. song I used to play back in the... Well, 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 I hope you're well rested. Your DNA test shows that you have Stone Age cousins from over 40,000 years ago. More on that once you land in Croatia. Lee Hart's already met his Irish relatives, but now... He's about to go back further in his family tree than he could have ever imagined. It's a journey back to the Stone Age in Croatia. It really is beautiful, I can't believe it. One of the most peaceful places I've ever been to. And it's great being away from technology and having none of that sort of life interfering and... I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Lee, but you're living proof that Neanderthals hooked up with humans before they died out because 2.7% of your DNA has Neanderthal markers. Now, since you're related, you're off to visit the family man cave in Krapina. Now, it's not as tidy as the Boyle's old place, but then again, it is 40,000 years old. Local guide Tanya will meet you for this very unique open home. So we are actually on the Neanderthal site here in Krapina. It's the largest Neanderthal site in Europe and one of the oldest here. Okay, so they obviously found a lot of bones here. Yes. And how old are they? 120,000 years back. Oh. Okay, yeah. and they're probably more advanced than we first thought. Yes, some findings uh, say that they could even talk. It wasn't right. really um, like we do today, but they did have a certain way of the communication. Language, yeah. Which is amazing, because obviously humans and Neanderthals were living alongside each other. They were living in some kind of a tribe. They had rituals together, burying and things like that. So, Which explains a bit, because I apparently have 2.7% DNA of Neanderthal in me. I'm not sure if that's a lot or not, mm -hmm. but it suggests that perhaps at one stage there was a combined family vacation okay. <laughs> with the uh, Neanderthals and the... Okay. It's, yeah, it's amazing to think that right here where we're standing, there would have been families, you yes. know, living, sleeping, eating right here. Yes. It was a great experience being at that cave for a number of reasons, mainly because it was such a beautiful spot. But secondly, that's where they found all these bones. So I can imagine the guys maybe 150 years ago or 100 years ago when they, when they found those bones, what a remarkable historic discovery it was. But then of course, the history itself, that you had people very similar to us living there, you know, eating, living their lives like we do right there in that spot. And that was actually quite, um, quite mind blowing. Because I've been tracing my DNA around the world, I've been to Ireland, and I was wondering if I was going to feel a connection with, with any particular place. And it's amazing, I've come back this far, and this is the first place I've started to feel uh, an eerie feeling about the fact that ancestors were here before me. Mm -hmm. 